Hi everyone, it's Gina and I'm back with day six of the Lupus and Chronic Illness Awareness Challenge. Today's prompt is what would you say to your pre-lupus or pre-chronic illness self about what you are currently experiencing. I went ahead and made some notes so please bear with me as I glance back and forth um, with the notes that I've made about tonight's presentation. So younger self, you're going to become chronically ill. It will begin with minor symptoms that you're going to dismiss as being nothing. You won't pay any attention to them. And then, boom, all of a sudden, your life will completely change. So here's what I have to say to you. One, write down all of your symptoms. It doesn't matter what they are. It could be that twitch in your left eye that just won't go away. It could be the tingling in your fingers. It could be the tingling and numbness in your feet. It could be that minor ache in that pinky finger when you get up in the morning. Whatever they are, write down all your symptoms, start to keep a journal, and whenever you get to a doctor, present that journal to your doctor so they can be aware of all of your symptoms or any new symptoms that you might be experiencing. Number two, and this might be a vanity one, but don't get too attached to your hair because you're going to lose it not once but twice you're going to feel that everything is just falling apart because your hair is falling out you're going to leave tons of it in the shower you will probably lose a bunch of it on the pillow but don't get too attached to it because you know hair goes back what counts is not what's on your head but what's in it Number three, get medical records of both your parents because it's going to help you when that cardiac problem pops up in 2005 and it's definitely going to help you whenever you have to go in and get that loop recorder put into your chest so that you can be monitored constantly by your cardiologist and the hospital. You're going to need to know all of the information about your dad's heart attack and about whatever issues your mom might have been experiencing with whatever ailments she went she might have experienced at the time get medical records of both of your parents number four ask a lot of questions about this whole sickle cell trait that you were diagnosed with when you were 15 years old and make sure that they tell you everything you need to know because come in 2006, you're going to need all of that information. And even later on in 2016 and 2017, you're going to wonder why nobody really told you just how important it was to find out about the fact that you have the sickle cell trait and how you can pass it on to your children and how you can have issues because of that. You're going to wonder if the sickle cell trait might have predisposed you to lupus and all of the other illnesses that you're dealing with. You're going to wonder if your other children have it because they may not have been tested for it when they were born. There's going to be a lot of questions, so make sure you find out as much information as you possibly can, my younger self. Number five. Don't forget about your bush medicine. You were raised with that bush medicine. Don't forget it when you go off to college and decide that you're going to pop that first Tylenol when you get the first sign of a headache. Yes, I know it might be a little bit more difficult then because it's not readily available, but don't forget about your bush medicine. You're going to definitely need it when you get diagnosed later on with lupus and all of the other health issues that you're going to be dealing with like the neuropathy and the pernicious anemia you're going to go right back to those roots 
and that bush medicine or that backyard medicine that you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, is going to save your life later on. So don't forget about your bush medicine. Number six, don't let anyone tell you that it's all in your head. In 1996, when you begin to feel really, really ill, when you're pregnant with your daughter, and uh, you go for one test after another, and those doctors cannot find anything wrong with you physically, they're going to write a script that they're going to say that you need to go and see a psychiatrist because it's all in your head. Do not let them convince you that it's all in your head because come December, January, you are going to be getting an apology from your doctor when they discover that all of this time you've had cancer growing and now you're being told that you have two days to get your life together because chances are you're going to die on the operating table whenever you come in for surgery in about two days. So do not let anyone tell you that it's all in your head. It doesn't matter whether it's your rheumatologist, your hematologist, if you are feeling something, you need to let them know and don't stop until you find out what's wrong. Number seven, guess by hearing all of these other ones, this should come as no surprise, but you're going to be facing a lot of challenges, but the good news is that you're going to overcome them. You're going to fall down a lot and you're going to get back up every single time. Number eight, don't get attached to things, don't get attached to stuff. Stuff really is not going to be important. What's important are the people that you surround yourself with, your friends, your family, that's what's important. Things, you're going to probably throw them away, you're gonna give them away. Don't get attached to stuff, don't get attached to things. Things can always be replaced if you end up losing them. Friends and family are important. Those cannot re be replaced. Number nine, you are going to suffer loss. You're going to suffer the loss of friendships. You're going to suffer the loss of a job. You're going to suffer the loss of your ability to move around as freely as you used to. There's going to be a lot of loss. but do not give up. Do not give up on being healthy. Do not give up on your dreams. Do not give up on life. You have to keep on living. Number 10, and this is going to be a huge one for you. Don't get too attached to your independence. Yes, I know you grew up being independent. You traveled the world and you're going to keep on traveling and doing things and you're not going to want to rely on anyone to help you out, that kind of stuff, but there's going to come a day when you are going to need someone's help. You're going to need someone, someone's help to help you to fold laundry. You're going to need someone's help to mop the floor, to help you with the basic stuff around the house, to help you with your yard. This is all stuff that you've been able to do on your own until now. Whenever you get sick, you're going to have to rely on people and your independent streak is going to come under attack and you are going to have a major struggle whenever that that happens. So don't get too attached to your independence because there's going to come a time when you're going to have to rely on others. It's going to be tough for you, but understand that the people that you're going to be relying on, they all love you and they all care about you. Number 11. You have to remember that life is short and you need to develop that life is short attitude and make sure you take advantage of those good days. Number 12, you may have suffered loss, but remember that something great is going to come out of all of this that you are going through. You are going to start to write again. You're going to write articles. You're going to write poetry. Your painting is going to take off on a whole different level. You're going to start to design clothing. Something great is going to happen, even with all of the loss that you have suffered. Remember that. Number 13, trust your intuition. 
remember that nobody knows your body better than you do nobody else has lived inside of your body longer than you have so make sure you trust your intuition number 14 enjoy your freedom while you still can because there's going to be days when you are going to be in so much pain you won't be able to go anywhere you won't be able to get up out of your bed you won't be able to leave the house some days you you may end up walking with a cane some days you may have a walker it's going to be hard so enjoy your freedom while you can and last but not least number 15 remember that God is always going to be at your side he's never gonna leave you there's going to be days when you are going to get angry at him. There are days when you're going to wonder if he's still there. But take my word for it, God has never left your side and he's never going to leave your side. He made a promise that he's going to be with you through thick and thin. He is always going to be there. God is never going to leave you.